Queen Mary of Romania. Queen Soldier, Empress of Greater Romania, and a truly feisty woman in history. Queen Mary was one of Romania's most popular and well-loved female figures in history. Mari, who was also known as Missy, managed to make herself and her country famous around the world, thanks to her strong personality and genuine love for her people. One of her favorite quotes was, Character is destiny, which epitomized her own strum and vivid character that shaped her destiny. If you have not heard of Queen Mari of Romania and you are a fan of historical movies, like I am, then you might want to know that you can check out the movie available on HBO, Video On Demand. The movie focuses on her successful efforts to lobby for the unification of her adopted country over which she reigned as Queen at the Paris Peace Conference following World War II. Princess Mary of Edinburgh, or Missy, was born on the 29th of October, 1875 to Queen Victoria's second son, Prince Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh, and his wife, Grand Duchess Mary of Russia. Missy's early years were spent at her parents' estate in Kent, Eastall Manor. Summers at Osborne and frequent visits to Windsor ensured that Marie saw much of her grandmother, Queen Victoria, who Missy referred to later as her wonderful little old grandmama. Mari was brought up under the close supervision of her stubborn, independent and somewhat eccentric Russian mother, who was determined to make her a queen. When she was a young girl, Missy adored her first cousin, the future King George V and wanted to marry him. Her mother had a different idea. She not only despised the British royal family but she was also very opposed to the concept of a marriage between first cousins, which the Russian Orthodox Church forbade. In this light, it was her mother who married Mari off at the age of 17, to a man 10 years her senior whom she barely met and did not love. Crown Prince Ferdinand was the German-born nephew of Romanian King Carl I. They were married on 10 January 1893, thus uniting the Romanian throne with those of England and Russia. The marriage enhanced the prestige of the Romanian royal family and for better or for worse, set the course of Marie's future life, whose letters to a close friend show her marriage was a disaster. When she was married, she had little idea about Romania and did not even know where the country was located. However, gradually she developed a deep love for the country and its people, adopting their language and dressing in their native fashion. Yet at first, Marie found her new life quite challenging. Being very free-spirited, she found the strict Romanian court to be stifling. Her husband's uncle, King Carol, controlled every aspect of the couple's lives even though she often rebelled, insisting on riding her horses and breaking other norms. And her husband was not much better, offering no support, companionship or social life. Eventually, they learned to live together. Marie said that they were the best associates, the most loyal companions but our lives intertwine only in certain matters. Marie gave deferential respect to her husband, and her husband respected her because she was very knowledgeable, cultured and worldly. With her artistic mind, she helped to popularize Romanian folk art, skillfully decorated the interiors and gardens of several Romanian royal palaces, even designed her own clothes and wrote more than 15 books yet. The story of her involvement and influence in World War I is just now coming to the forefront of history. Queen Mary made her mark on the world as an intelligent, determined woman who could do more than dazzle with her beauty and charm through the two biggest European wars of her lifetime. In 1913 when Romania entered the Balkan War, 
Marie became very much involved in the war effort. Cholera was running rampant and in spite of her aversion to illness in general, she used her rebellious nature to good advantage, earning her greatest praise for her tireless and heroic efforts among Romania's sick and wounded. Heedless of discomfort, dirt, and the danger of infection, Queen Marie toured the hospitals, brought in cigarettes, food and other comforts for the men, and sat by cholera victims as they fought the disease. The experience was horrific but enlightening. Marie emerged from it with a new resolve to be of service to her country, and with the courage to face any adversity that came her way. World War I came just two months before the Crown Princess became Queen at the death of King Carol in 1914. War hit Romania hard and the hospitals were once again her focus with Queen Mari setting up her own hospital in the grounds of the Royal Palace and tirelessly touring the other Red Cross hospitals. By 1917, she was touring more than hospitals and visited the war front where she sat with the soldiers in foxholes filled with mud and water. Even as her youngest son had just died of typhoid at age three. It was from these efforts that the Queen of Romania was often called the Mother of the Wounded or the Queen Soldier. As Romania was overrun and her army unable to keep up the fight, there was talk of the King, Queen and the children fleeing for safety to England but Marie refused to leave. Instead, as part of the resistance movement, she and a group of military advisers devised the plan by which the Romanian army would choose a triangle of the country in which to stand and fight, instead of retreating into Russia. But in spite of the resistance movements, Romania was forced to surrender on 6 December 1917 and a pro-German government was installed, which Marie stoutly refused to recognize. According to a post in Tom's Place blog, which I encourage you to read, I left the link below in the description, and I quote, her stand was reported, with much pride, in the British press which called her the living centre of Romania in exile under the shadow of defeat. American papers put it more dramatically, Romanian Queen defies Kaiser, screamed the headlines. When the war ended, Romania was not ratified internationally and needed to claim major territorial gains for the new country of Greater Romania. Queen Mari was extremely popular in the press, hence the Prime Minister of Romania called upon Mari to join him for the pending showdown in Paris between the Great Four and numerous small nations with their competing claims. Romania's every hope lay with its queen, on her mission to Paris to face the world's most powerful leaders and lobby for international recognition of its great unification. Her arrival in Paris caused a sensation, not only was she the only female delegate at the conference, but as queen of an Eastern European nation, Queen Mari radiated an exotic aura. Unlike most royal figures, Marie understood the power of publicity, and her carefully crafted image of mother and saviour of Romania was eagerly embraced by the press. At the conference she proved a shrewd negotiator in encounters with Woodrow Wilson, George Kemenso, and Britain's Prime Minister David Lloyd George. By the time the conference was over, Marie had gained official recognition and aid for her beleaguered Romania and she returned to Bucharest in triumph. Marie did a lot of travelling after the war. She visited her birth country England, the city of Paris, and even America. King Ferdinand died in 1927 and in 1929 she was offered a vacant seat in the Regency by the Romanian Prime Minister, but Marie declined. She wanted to focus more on decorating, gardening, and her latest interest, writing. 
Around this time she was writing her memoirs and children's fiction and also became interested in the Baha'i faith. Marie was paid a visit by Baha'i teacher Martha Root. Following this visit, and after reading some Baha'i literature, Marie accepted the faith. Following her son Carol's reclaiming of the throne in 1930, Queen Mary found herself more on the fringes of the Romanian monarchy, and she spent her remaining years enjoying the company of her grandchildren. Queen Mary of Romania died on the 18th of July 1938 from cancer. She has been called one of the greatest figures in Romanian history. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more videos on the fabulous, fierce and feisty women in history.